Hello, welcome to This Week on Mustard TV. Next week, David Cameron goes to the European summit in Brussels to try and agree the fine detail on his plans for a reformed EU. If he gets the deal he wants, it could mean a referendum on whether Britain should leave the Europe in June this year. Last week, David Cameron visited a factory in Chippenham in Wiltshire to tell workers about the draft deal that's up for discussion. We've had a series of discussions and negotiations and today the European Council has issued a whole set of documents about the things that should change in Europe addressing these British issues that we've put on the table. Britain, as the second biggest contributor to the European Union, as a major player in the European Union, we should go about this in a proper, planned, measurable, measured and sensible way. And that is what I've done these last seven months going to the individual European countries, meeting with the Prime Ministers, meeting with the Presidents, explaining the issues that Britain had. So what have we got in this document? What we've got is basically something I asked for, which is that people shouldn't be able to come here and get instant access to our in-work welfare system. We should end something for nothing. What is proposed is an emergency break that means that we don't have to pay full rates of welfare for four years in the United Kingdom. So we've only got now potentially a few months before we hold this referendum. If we get this agreement, if it goes through and uh, we name the date for that referendum. And I think this best of both worlds, out of the single currency, out of the no borders agreement, out of an ever closer union, but in the things that work for Britain, that give us jobs, that give us security, that give us the ability to make sure we have a stronger and safer world, I think that is something worth fighting for. So how good a deal is this for Britain and will it be enough to keep us in Europe? Here to discuss this is Vicky Ford, Conservative MEP for the East of England. Also with us, former European Parliamentary candidate for the Green Party, Rupert Reid, and former UKIP Parliamentary candidate for Waveney and the current Suffolk Police and Crime Commissioner candidate, Simon Tobin. So let's start with this deal. Is it a good deal? Well, it's a big negotiation and it's us with 27 other different countries. Um, so. First of all, why are we doing this? Um, we haven't had a referendum for 40 years and we need to have that say. Um, when I talk to people who voted in the last referendum, they've always said to me, you know, I only voted for a common market, not for a political union. And we're now in a position that I've seen in the seven years I've done this job, the Eurozone moving much closer into that political union. That doesn't work for us. We can't carry on with the status quo. So a key reason why we're doing this negotiation is to allow us to pull out of that political union, out of the Eurozone, reaffirm that we're not in that borderless Europe, but still keep that voice in the single market. There's a lot of different moving pieces here, but fundamentally that's the package we're trying to put together. And I'm sure that we'd all want to have more in the deal and uh, but what can we achieve with us and 27 other countries around the table Let's um, ask Rupert so it's a big Reed. negotiation is it is it a good deal that David Cameron's starting out with as, as he goes into this conference so Vicky says she's sure we'd all like to have more in the deal well I'd like to have less in the deal the thing that really concerns me about what David Cameron is doing in these negotiations is he's making the EU worse. The bit that particularly concerns me is the so-called competitiveness bit. What that basically means is slashing regulations that do good things for us, that do good things for workers, that do good things for the environment. So what really concerns me is that what we're being offered here is a choice between leaving the EU with UKIP or staying in an EU which we've made worse with the Conservatives. And that's why I'm starting to think that actually the right way to go here is to reject both these alternatives and say, if we were going to stay in the EU, we'd only want to stay in an EU that, actually, that was actually better. That's unfortunately not on offer. So I'm coming to the conclusion that actually this whole referendum is a set-up job between a right-wing EU and an even more right-wing EU. I say a plague on both their houses. Okay, let's ask Simon Tomey, what do you make of the deal so far as it stands? Well, we appreciate uh, what David Cameron is doing. How can we not? He's going out there to attempt to um, realign a lot of major concerns of the British people. We um, are very, very concerned about what is coming back. We don't think in any way there were hard enough questions out there. Um, we think that it's watered down. Um, and I urge the British people on behalf with UKIP uh, really look what uh, Mr Cameron comes back with at the final uh, situation because we're very concerned about it. 
Well, let's look at some of the some of the yeah. things he's come back with was so far. Mm. Things yeah. that are up for discussion: migrants <coughs> and welfare benefits. A lot of people are concerned about this. This emergency break, meaning that if there's an excessive strain on the welfare system, in work benefits could be denied to EU workers for four years. A good idea. Well, if you go, it's a start. Okay, this is a negotiation, and there's a clear issue. You look at it in some parts of Norfolk, where you've seen a very significant change in the population and a lot of pressure on local services and concern. So you can, the, the sort of completely lack of control on the impact of people coming in on local services is not affordable. 40% um, of the people coming in now from the EU are on those in-work benefits. So saying you need to pay something in before you can get something out is important. but. You also need to make sure that we can stay open for study and for science. Look at the John Innes Centre. I was there just a few weeks ago. You know, we're doing amazing world-leading stuff here in Norwich on crop science and what will happen when climates change. And they need to be able to work with scientists all over the world. So it's not saying no movement, but saying have some control across that. Some people are very concerned about migration, aren't they, Rupert Reid? Yeah, well, the way I think we need to look at this, we need to listen to, to those concerns. I'm very concerned that some people in my own party, the Green Party, most of whom are going to be voting to stay in the EU in the referendum, are not listening to people who are concerned about the number of people who've been migrating to this country. And most of the people who are concerned about the number of people migrating to this country are working class people. And the reason they're concerned is they're worried that the differential, the differential between their wages and what the very richest people in this country are getting is growing and that's being fueled by immigration and the statistics support that. So while on the one hand I am obviously completely on side with those people in my party who have been leading the way and saying we've got to be absolutely humane towards refugees and that's of course where UKIP fall down completely. I think also we need to make sure that we are listening to the reason why some people are concerned about the EU. They're concerned about free movement of labour because free movement of labour is a boss's charter. Free movement of labour is exactly what big business wants and the real trouble with the EU now is it's becoming a club for big business and David Cameron's renegotiation well, actually, is making it even more like just, that. Just if you look at the concerns that small businesses have with the EU, they want to be, we want to be able to trade across those 28 different countries, 500 million consumers. That's really, really important. If we're to build our economic growth, we need to make sure that we don't um, overwhelm our small businesses with red tape. That's been a key part of getting the British economy back. Okay, And having that drive to remove red tape is a key bit of this negotiation and actually not just for big business but the terms of the negotiation next week we'll talk about small and medium-sized businesses I'm off to meet Norfolk farmers this afternoon you know incredibly important that to make sure that we can have food that's affordable but also environmentally sustainable but we need to do that in a way which doesn't add unnecessary red tape so that is a key part of this negotiation is winding back the red tape and making sure that there is a level playing field across the single Market. Let's bring Vicky, Simon well, Tobin in. Can I just respond briefly to that? Briefly. Vicky, what you say make, there makes a lot of sense. But the reality is that the EU is a club for big business. The regulations, the way that you operate it, overwhelmingly oper it operates in favour of large businesses but and large that's farms. That's precisely why we are having this renegotiation. Mm. And it's I'd precisely <laughs> why, in the terms of the deal on the table, is particularly this red tape test for small and medium sized businesses to make sure that we can and address that concern. Simon Tobin, come, come, come back on businesses. Well, business and, and a cross-section of points made. Number one, asylum seekers. UKIP are completely for asylum seekers as long as they're genuine. We're not against 330,000 people coming into the UK with very limited checks. I've taken out, um, as I do with probation services, um, we have 30 men four days a week. I took a team out last week out of my eight seven were from uh, Balkan states, etc., part of the EU. These people are in our probation services. Um, we are very, very concerned of the controls on immigration. Now, immigration is good for UK because you get some genuine workers and we need good people, but there is no control on it. But actually, Simon, if you look at what's on the table for next Thursday, 
there's a cross-border criminal records check exactly to address that issue. So, I mean, so I've been lobbying for a cross-border sex offenders register criminal records check for four years now. We had an awful incident with a woman being beaten up in Ipswich a few years ago and it turns out that the person was a known rapist elsewhere. And ever since then we've been saying we need to have this cross-border records check. And now it is on the table. It is there. I was with the Home Office just two weeks ago talking about the issues of making sure our computers can all talk to each other, etc. But it's there, and your police and crime commissioner in Suffolk is pushing for it because that is what will and a, help. And him a brief response will almost out of time to for stop the first that. Part. Okay. One of the national papers this morning, um, one of the tabloids, uh, uh, did some groundwork on a trucks coming in um, to the country. Uh, one of these gang leaders is bringing 27 people every day through, just straight through. There is no systems. One of the guys in my team was from Russia, and he told me that he'd killed someone in, in there, and he's in our country in probation. I've got Interpol onto him. It's but not how good enough. It ha Getting cross-border records is really important, but you have to stay at the table to get it. Exactly, and we've made that point. Thank you very much. Stay with us after the break. We'll be talking more about the EU and whether staying in or leaving would be best for Norfolk. Hello, welcome back. Tonight we're talking about Europe and asking if the deal which David Cameron hopes to do at next week's European summit is a good deal for Britain and if it will be enough to encourage people to vote to stay. Here to talk about the EU is Vicky Ford, Conservative MEP for the East of England, former Green Party candidate for the European Parliament Rupert Reid and former UKIP PPC for Waveney Simon Tobin. So let's really get down to the nuts and bolts of what it's going to mean for Norfolk. We know there are lots of migrant workers who come to work on farms. We've also got Portuguese nurses in Kings Lynn Hospital. What kind of difference would this deal make to these people, do we think? What would, it, what would the difference, what would, it, what would it mean for Norfolk? Well, I think um, the incredible dynamic changes of the community, first of all, the people are, are come in. I think Thetford is an unbelievable percentage of Portuguese to the people. But this can be good because we need migration. But the point that we're always making is the controlled immigration. It's absolutely critical. Um, you've got uh, areas that are being completely blown apart. They're causing problems with doctor surgeries, schooling, etc, etc. I do a lot of work in Great Yarmouth on the ground in the areas down there and uh, the communities are completely changed. And in fact, what's very interesting, when you've got a second or third generation ethnic um, family, and I do a lot of work with these guys, they're concerned about it almost or as much as the people are born and bred for a long time. But will coming out of the EU really control migration? Will well, it make a difference? Well, no, because you need to have a bit of both, OK? First of all, the deal that's on the table potentially, and it is just the start of a negotiation, will put controls on the pressures on our hospitals and our welfare system because the access to benefits, healthcare, housing will no longer be automatic. They will, you have to pay in before you can get out. But at the same point, you mentioned... Um, Portuguese nurses in our hospitals and, and, and actually there's been a big two-way flow with doctors and nurses and we need to have um, people coming from other countries to help and support us but we also need to make sure that we have strong controls on those qualifications so for example we've now changed it so you have automatic language testing we're now looking at ways that we can double check people's uh, professional record from other countries and that's all stuff the UK has driven through the common market Market to say if a nurse is going to come from Portugal, if one of our Norwich trained doctors is going to go and work in Paris, how do we check what their records are and make sure that they have always been professional, that they have the right qualifications? That's something the UK is very much driven and that's why it's important that we can continue having an ongoing voice in the common market. So to me, this is a deal which pulls us out of the ever closer union, strengthens our borders on some of these pressures, especially on local services, but also also continues to give us a voice on those international discussions in the single market. Rupert, you said earlier this is a bad deal. What difference will people notice, do you think, in Norfolk if this goes ahead? Well, look, we're facing a referendum, right? 
and the choices you're being offered in the referendum are this deal, which, as I say, I think has got some very worrying aspects uh, in terms of being more pro-corporate, making the EU more big business uh, friendly, um, or you pull out altogether. And what I'm saying is I don't accept either of those choices. I would like to live in a Europe which is more ecological, which is more environmental, which is a safer place to live in the future, safer vis-a-vis -vis chemicals, safer safer vis-a-vis -vis pollution levels, um, taking control of our of our climate back from the, the big polluters, but it's not on offer. So will you, be, so voting, but but also, will you be voting to stay uh, in the EU or will you be abstaining? So after a lot of soul searching, I've decided that uh, I'm going to spoil my ballot paper. The first time in my okay. life, I'm going to say okay. no to no to this fake referendum, which has been a set up job by Cameron to pit the Conservative Party against UKIP, leaving us, uh, us Greens, Lib Dems, Labour out of the picture. Oh, that's a really I say a playing on both the houses. A really positive statement by I would like to see more jobs, more opportunity, more chance, both for big businesses but small businesses too, and for people to be able to build their lives in a very competitive world. We live in a very competitive global economy, and we cannot afford more of our jobs to go to other parts of the world. We you're are racing not to the bottom, Vicky. When you get, when you, you, we are you cut, not. You say cut red tape. We are what you mean is we, getting rid of good regulations that are protecting our environment. Not, That's what not Osborne wants to do. That's what Cameron wants what to do. What we do all the time across the single market, we look at how can we remove 28 different pieces of paper so that when you're trading, if you're a business in Norwich and you're selling, um, we've seen you know companies in Thetford are selling um, manufactured goods all over the single market on one set of rules, okay? But we need them to be rules that actually remove red tape, don't add it. And that's well, an ongoing challenge. And that's one of the things we will get. Let's, let's also um, hear from some of our experts at the UEA. Earlier this month, the UEA held a special event in Norwich where members of the public could ask a team of experts their questions about the European Union. Professor Hussein Kasim from the politics department organized that event. He said there are lots of reasons why people are confused about Europe. There's been no real attempt on the pro-European side to explain how the European Union works. Um, but, you know, there's kind of sort of silence about the interaction with Europe, about the activities of the institutions, about what, what um, achievements are, are realised in common. Um, that's a real failure of, of, of pro-Europeans. It's been pronounced in particular periods, but um, I think that you, know, you, you have to go back to, um, you know, to, to the early 70s and Edward Heath, perhaps, to, um, to look for somebody who actually explained why um, belonging to the European community. Community. Professor Hussein Kassim, let's start with you, Simon Tober. Do you, when you speak to people, mm. are they confused about the EU or are they very clear? At the moment, I think both camps, believe it or not, I should say, need to drive their agendas forward because what we're worried about is that because we're still in the U European Union, the people do not realise the impact. We pay £55 million a day to be members of them. We are the fifth biggest mm. economy in the world. No, we're not. Uh, we are the. Um, I'll give you an example. They say if we come out, um, our economy is going to go through the floor. Mercedes motor cars uh, sold 140,000 cars. Volkswagen is the uh, fourth biggest uh, importer of cars into UK. They need us more than we need them. We uh, have a net overpayment of 60 mi we billion have pounds. We have no idea what the negotiation would be like if we vote to leave. At the moment, you know, we've got a package. We know Europe needs to change. This is a start of those changes. It's a start of helping us to be more competitive, more flexible, give more powers back to local governments, national governments, so not so much is decided in Brussels. All of that I agree with. That's a start of those changes. If we negotiate this deal in 10 days' time and then, then we vote to leave, what then happens? We have no idea because the ball is not in our court. We're negotiating with 27 other heads of state. They are not benign economists. A lot of them have got their own reasons why internally they don't want to make it easy for a country to leave the EU. Just so we could just, we have no idea. Anyone who says you're guaranteed a trade deal, you have no guarantee there is no agreement. A brief response, Simon Tobin. We have looked after our country for a, a long time, thousands of years, maybe the, the Union for yeah. 300 years. Why do we need to ask, with a begging bowl, to 27 other countries whether or not we can operate what we want to because do or whatever? If because if you want to stay in the common market, that's what we a common are, market is. We are not leaving Europe. We 
love Europe. We love the dynamics, the food, the wine we will buy and trade. We do not be, need to be interlocked with these people. I, I agree. We want to be out of the political union, but in the single market, in the common market. Let's that is what Reed. people voted for, and that is what I want to see delivered. What would you like to see happening? As I say, I want to see a more ecological Europe and a more ecological Britain. I want to see a Britain that's fit for purpose for the 21st century. That's not on offer by the Conservatives or UKIP. What we actually need to do is look beyond this fake referendum. And what I want to say to people is, if you abstain, or better still, join me in spoiling your ballot paper. That's actually the most positive it's thing you can do. Hey, let, let me just finish. Let me just finish. It's politics. actually the most positive thing you can do, because then you're saying if the referendum gets uh, gets voted through then Mr Cameron hasn't really won and if the referendum gets voted no then Mr Farage hasn't really won. If we have only say 20 or 30 percent of people voting on the winning side in this referendum if enough people say this is a set up job then it's actually good we're actually going to have another chance to look at this and that's what we should the, have. The no campaign the leave campaign now is being operated by grassroots out it's a cross party group of people. Liam Farr for a major conservative um, but who is going to be perceived as the winner? There is Nigel Farage is going to be the winner, isn't he? No, no, it? no, it's not. If you vote to leave. No, That's no. the truth. It's not a UKIP-driven thing. This is what we're driving forward for the British people. It is not polit politics anymore. This referendum for the people of Great Britain is the most important thing to have happened, more important than any general election for years and years and years. If we remain in, we're going to go a certain di uh, direction. If we come out, we then can control our country and our sovereignty. Okay, we're almost out of time. We've got a couple of minutes left. In 30 seconds or so, Simon Tobin, tell me what you would like people to come out of this, this, uh, this, um, this event next week. This, I'm asking, as, as we all do, within the grassroots out, cross-section of people, uh, Kate Howey, uh, major Labour person, founder of it, uh, UKIP, um, conservative groups who want to get out. Have a look at what Mr Cameron brings back. We uh, need to get out of the EU and control our borders and our future. Uh, Rupert Reid, what would you like to see happen in the, in the, in the coming months before yeah. this referendum? So I want place? people to really think about this process and ask themselves, is what the UKIP option uh, are, is being presented as, is, is that really what they want? Uh, do they want a more right-wing EU, a more pro-corporate EU? Do they want to get rid of environmental regulations, labour regulations? If they want neither of those things, then consider doing what, what I'm doing, which is to say, actually, neither nor. Let's think about this again and let's have a vote which would mean, in my case, I want to say spoiling your ballot paper. Uh, I think it's the most constructive thing to do at this point. Let's, let's express ourselves in this referendum in a way that means that everybody has to think again and give us something which is actually worth having. Vicky Ford, okay, so I that? have long said Europe needs to change and our relationship needs to change. And I hope that next week's negotiation is the start of that change that allows us to pull out of that ever closer union but stay in the single market, but a single market that removes unnecessary costs but also gives us full control over our borders whilst also still allowing that exchange of people for work, but importantly allows us to have a voice on areas like security, like combating terror, like combating criminal activity, and really importantly for jobs and growth and opportunities here in Norfolk, a full voice still in the single market. And if we vote to leave, we do not know what we will get. All right. Thank you all very much. It's been a really interesting discussion. I'm sure we'll be talking to guests again in the run up to the referendum, which we think will be held in June. But thank you to all my guests for taking part. If you want to, you can get in touch with us. We're on Twitter at Mustard this week. Good night.